grade A. Um, yo, I was sitting back and I was doing some drawing as usual. And I was looking in the nodes in Harmony and I saw this tone node and this highlight node. And I was like, what is this? Oh yeah, I need to give this a try again. So this video is about how to rock that highlight and tone note. Get at me. Mm. If you're watching this video, I assume that you already know how to make the swatches, make the colors for uh, each color of whatever you plan on coloring in Harmony. So this video is not about making the swatches the colors for you to color stuff this is about the shading nodes so what i've done is i've created a color for basically a swatch for the light and a swatch for the shadow and then i'm making a layer for the light and a layer for the shadow <clears throat> so it's a funny way how this works and once we hit the nodes you'll see if you watch previous videos is the idea and the concept is not that much different so you need to know where your light is coming from if you don't know where your light is coming from this is gonna be super hard so this is a conceptual thing you need to know where your shadow is gonna fall again that's an art concept if you need more on that, I do have a Skillshare class on shading characters. Booyah. Endorsement. Wait, for myself. The colors don't matter what you use for the light and shadow because they're just a matte. Meaning that you can use any color that you want as long as you know that that color represents light and that color represents shadow because actually inside the node, you can change the color of both the light and the shadow. And I will show you that. But you do need a layer where you're going to do your shadow work and your color work. So it seems complicated, convoluted, but it's only if you're unfamiliar with the way palettes work. And I mean, the way color works in harmony. Right. It's a pretty simple system that for every color you make, that there is a, uh, a related fill area associated with that. The beauty of it is if you decide to change that color at any time, any time, you just go into that color swatch and change the color and it changes the color everywhere that color is used in every single file that is used. That is awesome. It's time for the plugging and the playing. I just organized my node view so I could see the inputs of where things connect and flow to. So in my node library, I pulled out both the highlight and the tone node. And this initially when I start connecting things up, it's not, it's not connected to anything properly. Uh, currently they're just floating, right? So the chain, the flow of things is broken, right? But when I hold down Alt and I drag that tone node or it is, all I've told uh, the chain of information is, hey, there is a tone shader connected here. There's a highlight shader connected here. And now, if you look at the little sphere, you will see now the effect of both the highlight and the tone shader. Boom. So it's a funny way that they need to be connected because they needs to flow all through the same image, right? So at the top is the image and then both the highlight and the shade noter are being processed on the image above it. Hopefully that makes sense. If not, hit me in the comments. So if you go into the layer properties for either your highlight or your shadow node, you can effectively change the transparency so you can make it even more or less by adjusting the alpha on it. 
so if you wanted to the, the uh, highlight or the shadow to be more see-through you can also change the color uh, because the way it, it's pretty much similar to like the blending node in the way that it will effectively multiply the effect so you can see in both the highlight and the tone uh, node when I go in there I can I can change the radius of the blurring as well so again if you look at the sphere you can see how the edge of that softens as I increase the uh, radio blur and then as I play around and tweak with the color you can see the effect of the color of the shadow changes as well so it affords you a lot of flexibility and if you notice that it will clip the edges so you don't have to have a perfectly drawn shadow up to the edge. Tell me that's not fantastic. The important thing though is that you have to get the order and the flow correctly, right? So if you if you connect the inputs incorrectly, you can see how that you won't get the desired effect. Because currently the nodes are connected to the original the root drawing which is the orange sphere but both the shadow and the tone were not properly connected but when they're connected they all flow through you can see the effect is marvelous so how do we do this on this character it's the exact same concept and principle the idea is that you need to know where your light source is so that you can effectively place the shadows where they need to go it's really that simple this background is on a separate layer so I don't really care about where I draw outside the lines for that and this this can lid is actually on a separate layer and you'll see at the end it's funny when I was connecting some nodes that I was wondering like why is this not shading but it's on a separate layer too and I can show you I'll show you how things on a separate layers you could connect them up to the same shading nodes too I mean to the same uh, shadow node like the same artwork for the shadows wow that was really convoluted and so this I sped this up because I'm sure you don't want to watch me just draw in these shadow shapes and written I'm making up the shadow shapes this this is not an exact science I mean there's rules to it if you wanted to apply some real specific true logic there's differences between where you get cast shadows where you get um, form shadows and the edge and the transitions and that and the soft edges hard edges but, I, but for this I just want to hit that tone and a highlight so I want to say this is the side where I believe that there's shadow and then the green is where I'm putting some areas of light so if those colors bother you in terms of you drawing in where your lights and shadows are you can use whatever color makes it easier for you so if you're using if you plan on using yellow light you can use yellow light if you plan on using a color shadow you can color color shadow so I'm just going into the node editor again and this organizing that um, I, li I like to organize things but it's not even this not even really good organization to be quite honest this is just quick moving nodes around so I can see the names of things so I know where to attach things so I bring in from that node library again both the highlight shadow node I'm going to make a highlight shadow node for each one of the layers right so that it's it's quick and easy to connect things up and then I can reuse the same shadow and the light mat so these are these are basically masks that I'm effectively gonna reuse over and over again by just connecting nodes so here I have a shadow like the tone and then the highlight and then I'm just dragging a node and connecting dragging the node and connecting so I don't need to make you know a new art just to make shadows for the separate parts and pieces the only reason I might need to do that and I want to I'm gonna probably experiment with this for, for uh, something that animates that I probably would need to make sure that I had 
like shadows just for parts and pieces that I would have to do if I wanted them to effectively have uh, the shadows just controlled on those areas but I'm all I'm doing now is I'm just going in I'm just tweaking the shadows and then I'm taking the the color uh, values and then I'm just reusing those for the other uh, notes so that I have color consistency I tweaked the sh I think they tweaked the shadow color for the trash can just because I didn't like how intense the blue was it's still in the blue family but I just didn't like the uh, saturation of it which is again that's really that's really cool because you can effectively modify the shadow but still have the same shadow shape but you can change the color of it and it doesn't have to be the same color as the other ones right so here's the funny part where I was actually so I have a front part of this trash can and a back trash this part of the trash can so this character sits inside of there and I was applying to the to the wrong the wrong layer right which is hilarious because I wasn't even paying attention um, and so you can see where I'm like why is this not showing up and again that's the awesomeness of this whole system because you can never really completely blow this especially if you're aware of how the node system works right all you have to do is find the right node so this is just I want to show you this troubleshooting so that if you ever have an issue that it's just a matter of connecting checking your nodes seeing does do my nodes work and the reality is that you have to read your layers and all I did was I just did not read this trash can layer so I'm just going back and forth and then I decide maybe it's because the artwork is not a, one whole flat piece of art which was not the problem but I do like to do that because sometimes you'll get weird errors when you're when you render it out um, but I kept connecting it up and I was so baffled and then I finally finally like the rock finally read the name and was like there goes the node oh you got me and then I connected up and then instantly, boom, the shadow pops up on the lid, All right? And then the highlight pops up on the lid, boom. And I, again, I'm reusing the same shadow mats that I created at the beginning. It's the same artwork for the shadows that I use for every single one of those layers. So, I mean, you can't really beat that. I mean, you could, but you can't. That's an oxymoron, I think. But I, and then I say, hey, you know what? My favorite thing, reflected light. I got to throw that reflected light in there. Initially, I was going to see if maybe I could use the same nodes or even like a blend node to do the reflected light. And I, I'm not 100% sold on that this is the most effective way to do it. But I was like, yeah, I'll see if I can, I can use that uh, blending node, like a Photoshop blending node to create a reflected light that I would like. And all the reflected light is like the bounces and this is just magical bouncing light it's not even real but i looked at it and i was like yeah i don't really like it even when i played around with the different sort of blending options i just i didn't really like the way it looked and so i just decided to make it just a, a normal layer and then just a, a, adjust the uh the opacity of it so it wasn't super intense and then I just made another layer with the classic highlights because everybody likes highlights like highlights are sexy you like just pop 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 highlights highlights and then I created a um, uh, at the end I created a color card to add a backdrop to it and I changed the color of it so it was a bit more of a cream color and not an intense sort of bright white so it kind of had a similar odd like uh, acidic feel to it and then I, I do this like color separation thing that I draw behind the the, uh, the character layer in front of the background just to make additional separation between the two it's not a necessity I just like the way it looks it's kind of I probably could I could definitely do it a different way but this is convenient and I like that it's convenient so that's the process I mean if you have any questions hit me in the comments I mean, I might even make a video just to address your comments. Thank you for watching. Great. Very fun. Boom. <laughs>